meeting, isn't it? I'm sure we are all being impacted. We are learning something new. We are learning something great. We are learning something that is going to transform our lives. Say amen if you agree with me. You are welcome. We are very happy to have everyone. I'm sure by the time we leave this place, we won't be the same again. Not the same person who came in. Because a lot of things have been deposited. We trust God that each of us will return back as strong healer, strong children of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Just like uh, Mommy Pat said, talking about prayer, again, we don't have much time, so I will just say in the point, because I know that you are all children of God, you are born again, and you are used to praying. So let's look at James chapter 5. That's where I would like to start. And that will cover so many. That scripture will cover so many. From verse 13. I'm reading 13 to, to the end. So that will cover so many things. Are we there? Okay. James chapter 5 from verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Verse 16, confess your fault one to another, and pray one for another, that he may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth a fruit. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Now, this a few verses, but has covered the important areas of prayer that I would like to quickly talk about. Because we are looking at prayer, why should we pray? Why should we fast? Because we are going to be adding fasting to our prayers. Uh, why should we pray for long hours? Not the short, short bathroom prayers or internet prayers that we are familiar with. Prayer is important. And every one of us needs to understand the importance of prayer. The Christian life that both of us share, that all of us share, as we say that we are Christians, is won or lost in the consistent, faithful practice of, of praying. If we are not praying, we are going to be losing the battle of our faith. If we are not consistent, if we are not faithful, and we are not practicing the basis of our faith, which is prayer, worship, study of the word, Witness, fellowshipping together. If we are not practicing these things consistently, we will lose the strength of our Christian life. We cannot say we are Christians without praying. If you look at the scripture that I read in James, in verse 13, he said, Is any among you afflicted? He didn't say go to hospital. He said, Let him pray. It is not that going to hospital is bad, but the power to resolve issues, to bring solutions, the power to turn things around is in prayer. There is anybody afflicted. And affliction can come in many ways. It can be sickness, it can be weakness, it can be tiredness, it can be anything. Affliction can be anything. Affliction simply means that something is not going right. Something is not correct. Something is not going smoothly with you. So if you are experiencing any of those difficulties, the Bible says, let him pray. Is any Mary, let him sing psalms. Now in verse 14 it says, is any among you sick? Again, let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him. He didn't say he should go to pharmacy. It is not saying that going to pharmacy is wrong. It is that, look, this is your power line. This is the first line of action. Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And in verse 15, it says, the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he shall be forgiven him. So from these scriptures, 
we will see the significance of prayer. We need to know that God is real. As we say we are Christians, children of God, we must put our entire life into believing that everything the Bible says about God is true. When we believe that what God says about what the Bible, what the Bible says about God is true, then we will know that we can come to God and approach Him and talk to Him. We can bring all our cases, all our issues to Him in affliction, in sickness, in need, in lack in worship, in adoration, in fellowship. That is why prayer is important. So prayer is important because it is our one-line communication with God. There will be, it is our communication with God. Prayer is our communication with God. Number two, prayer is our fellowship with God. So prayer is not just communication. Prayer is fellowship. Prayer is fellowship. So when you come to God in prayer, you come into fellowshipping with God in prayer. You come into fellowshipping with God. You come into his presence to share fellowship with, with God. And prayer is important also because we must, it is the life wire of our Christian faith. There will be so many things to do, but in verse 16 of this James 5 that I read, he said, confess your first one to another and pray for one another. Pray for one another. So prayer gives us opportunity to connect with one another. Pray for one another. Talk to one another. Pray for one another. And then when you pray for one another, something is going to happen. It is also written in that verse 16 that you may be healed. Healing takes place. And healing is not just healing for sickness. It can be emotional healing. It can be social healing. It can be physical healing in terms of health. Everything will become all right when you are healed is a comprehensive whole healing. So you see that prayer is comprehensive. Prayer covers every area of our lives. So we must pray. And the B part says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The consistent prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available. So prayer is a power line for every believer. Prayer is a power line for every believer. Why should we pray? I, number three is that it is the key to an effective Christian life. The way to check the spirituality of anybody is to check his prayer life. When you don't pray, then you have shown and demonstrated that you are not a Christian. There is no Christian who does not pray. So you must learn to pray and pray well. Prayer leads to power. That's number four. Prayer leads to power. When you pray, you make power available. You generate heat. You generate power in the place of prayer. Because when you are praying, you are bringing God into the situation. Prayer leads to power. And power provides strength. Power provides strength. When you have power, you have strength. And you have stability. When you have power, you have strength. When you have strength, you have stability. Prayer is our fellowship with God. I have said that. Prayer gives us opportunity to make our request known to God. That's number five. You are writing. Prayer gives us opportunity to make our request known to God. Prayer gives us opportunity to tell God how it is with us. So all of us, as we are in the university, as we are growing up, Spend time with God in prayer. There will be so many things that will be occupying your time. Maybe you want to talk about lecture. Oh, there will be many important things I want to do. Oh, I, every day there will be important things. In Acts chapter 6, we saw the story of the early apostles. Acts chapter 6, if the media people can help. They said, look, there are important things to do. But there are other more important things that are appropriate. And that is prayer and giving attention to the word. So we will appoint other people to be serving tables. We appoint other people to be taking care of widows, to be doing what we call welfare. But we, we will give our attention to prayer and to ministry of the word. So prayer is the most important activity of your life as a Christian. Say that. Prayer is the most important activity of your life as a Christian. Now personalize it. Prayer is the most important activity of my life as a Christian. There is something special about prayer. 
And so you have to learn how to pray. And you don't learn how to pray by reading prayer book. You learn how to pray by praying. So you have to start praying. You have to learn how to pray. Five minutes, ten minutes, then it will become 15 minutes, then it will become 30 minutes. You have to learn how to pray. In Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11, let's quickly see it. The disciples of Jesus came to him and said, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, that's Jesus, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. You can see. Prayer is important. John taught his disciples to pray. Now, the disciples of Jesus also observed that he was praying and they came to him. Teach us also to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, when you pray, say, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven. No? What we commonly refer to as the, Lord, as the Lord's prayer. So what did Jesus say about prayer? Jesus taught his disciples how to pray so that they can pray appropriately. And the same way, we are teaching ourselves how to pray. Prayer is the outline of all of us to heaven. And I pray that each of us will give appropriate and prioritized attention to prayer. Because prayer must become personal to us as individuals. We are all individuals. There will be room for corporate prayer. But what we are saying to you is that as an independent university student who is a Christian, you must make prayer personal. Amen? And I pray that God is going to give us grace to do this in the name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. It's another important scripture I want to bring to you. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Be careful for nothing. It's a popular scripture that we know. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Because this is the reason why you should pray. And I feel I should spend time explaining this. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Verse 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Don't worry about anything. Why should you pray? When you pray, you will receive peace. Prayer brings peace. When you learn how to pray and bring your, pray, your request, your worry, your concerns to God, you will have peace. Things may be turbulent. Things may not be going right. But when you learn to bring it, that's what this scripture is telling us in Philippians. Don't worry about anything. But by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Whatever your requests are, whatever it is that you believe God for, whatever it is that is troubling you, bring it to God in prayer. And the moment you do that, verse 7 says, the peace of God will fill your heart. I'm sure we all want peace. I'm sure we all want to be happy. The key to it is prayer. And prayer is talking to God, bringing God to it. Keys to effective praying. Let me quickly run through this because all of these scriptures have given us background. Prayer must be directed to God. That's a key to effective praying. Direct your prayer to God in the name of Jesus. That's what the Bible told us. For Jesus said, whatever you ask the Father in my name. So we must pray in the name of Jesus. When you have asked all of your things, all of your requests, whatever you are telling God, say, I have asked all of this in Jesus' name. Because the name of Jesus is the what gives us authority, what gives power, what empowers your prayer, what helps God to release answers to your request. So you must direct your prayers to God in the name of Jesus. We read that in, 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 it's in 1 John 5. Number two, prayer must be in faith. Pray in faith. Believe God. Trust him. You must believe that everything in the Bible is true and believe that God is true. Believe that when you ask also, God is going to answer. Number three, be bold in praying and in confession. Be bold. When you believe that God is the almighty, when you believe that God is the all-powerful, then you can come to God with your request. That scripture I read to us says, let your request be made known to God. So be bold. Come to God. We are bold when we are talking to our fathers. When we are asking for school fees or we are asking for things. Let's be bold. Let's be courageous and go to God and ask, God, this is my desire. These are my challenges. This is the problem of my life. Be bold and be courageous and go to God. The bit about it also is that confess your sins to God. Tell God, God, I'm sorry for my sins. There is no effective prayer without confession of sins. So confess your sins to God. Let God know that, oh, I know that I'm a sinner. 
And when you confess your sins to God, be bold that the grace of God has presented you in righteousness. You have pleaded for forgiveness and answer will come in the name of Jesus. Number four is pray specifically. Be specific about your prayers. Don't just say, God, bless me. Hey, God, just help me. God, I just need your help. What kind of help? What specific help do you need? You know, part of the things I'm supposed to be talking about is how to generate prayer points. So let me just be saying it together. You are in school. You have to pray for academic success. How do you pray that? God, you, number one, you need wisdom. Number two, you need understanding. When you go to lecture room, some of us are just transiting from secondary school to university. It's a wide gap. It's a different life. Timetable has been displayed somewhere. It's you that will wake up and go for lectures. Nobody is coming to ring assembly bell. Nobody is going to say change of lesson. You are the one to identify your lecture room and go and sit down and attend the lecture. Chemistry 101, General Studies 101, whatever 103, 107. You are the one to identify your classmates. So you are going to be praying, God, send helpers to me. Send people that will connect me and help me to study well. For people that will help me to navigate my movement around the campus successfully. Those are specific prayer points. God, send good friends to me that will help me academically. Not the ones that will introduce boyfriend to me. You are generating specific prayer points. Because your prayer points as a student is different from your prayer points as a wife. The focus of your life right now is your academics. The focus of your life right now is your spiritual growth. How you are connecting with God. Just as Daniel prayed in a strange land, in the courts of the king, you are praying for wisdom. You are praying for the spirit of excellence. You are praying for grace to be distinguished. You are praying for understanding that, God, I want to understand these lectures. Some lecturers, they will just come and say blah, 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 and walk away. Some will come and say it's test. The physics you learn in secondary school is different from the physics. It's different from the formula. They will just come. There is no teacher to come around you and be saying, do you understand? That's why it's a lecture. The man has said and has gone. So you are the one that prays for wisdom, deep knowledge, deep understanding. God, open up my brain. Open up my heart. Connect me with those who are better than me that can explain these things to me. And then you will see as you are praying. Because it is what you pray for that you will receive. That's what God will give to you. And you, you, as you pray that prayer specifically, you will see that help will be coming. And somebody will just come around to help you. So pray specifically. Pray for good health. Some of you will have 7 o'clock lectures. Meanwhile at home, you have been so lazy, you didn't wake up at, until 9 o'clock in the morning. So now you have to wake up, get yourself ready, and go and attend 7 o'clock lecture. Pray specifically for help. God, I bind the spirit of laziness. Let me wake up on time. Let me be able to get transport. Let me be able to find a good place to sit. It's a prayer point. Because we, if your auditorium is 300 students and the place, and there is no microphone, you have to be able to sit where you can hear the lecturer. Specific prayer points. So pray specifically. And as you are living day by day, Identify what your needs are. Give me wisdom to deal with my friends. God, open my eyes. Let me see the type of friends that are coming to me. Expose wrong friends. Grant me revelation. Immediately, you will see that they will do things that you know that, oh, you are a bad friend. And you will see that it is God that has answered your prayer. And by the end of a semester, you will actually see that God has progressed you and has answered your prayer. Pray in anticipation, trusting the Lord for answer to your result. Look at the story of uh, Elijah in, in First Kings chapter 18. He prayed for the rain. He prayed, believing God that rain is going to fall. Pray. Another key to effective praying is the key of consistency. Be consistent in praying. Don't pray one of prayer. Don't think you know how to pray. I have already prayed about it. So sometimes people say, I don't pray repetition. No, 
There are some prayers that you need to pray every time. Be consistent. It's a key to praying. Consistently ask for wisdom. That's why when uh, Esther told the people to go and fast for three days, he didn't ask them to fast for one day. He knew, she knew that the problem they are facing is a big one. And that's what fasting does. Fasting adds strength to your prayer because it will deny your body. You know, we are talking about fasting. Fasting is important. Fasting means that you are not eating. You are not drinking water. You are possibly not also doing things that you used to do. Maybe you are used to drinking coke. People have different ways of saying they want to fast. But the first thing I'm talking about is denial of food. Don't sit down in the morning and eat doilo. When you do that, you deny your flesh. And your flesh gets power to pray. Pray more. Esther said, go, fast, three days, pray, be consistent. Those things that are strong, that are things that you need, pray. Another key to effective prayer is don't be a hypocrite. Don't pray in hypocrisy. Don't pretend to be praying when you are not praying. Some people hardly pray. Hardly pray. When they come to church, they do like they are praying, but they are not praying. Don't be a hypocrite. Don't pray in hypocrisy. Don't pray prayer that you are not even thinking that God will answer. Rather, pray with faith in your heart. Don't be a pretender with God. Don't pretend. Don't pretend that you believe God when you actually don't believe him. Don't be a spiritual hypocrite. Pray truthfully. Pray joyfully, knowing that God is going to answer your prayer. And I should also be talking about spirit-filled prayers, and that is praying in tongues. By now, I expect that all of us are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit praying is a powerful praying. When we pray in another tongue, we are engaging the Holy Spirit to help us to pray. We are activating our spirit. We are activating our spirit by the help of the Spirit of God in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Sorry, let's look at Isaiah 59 first. Isaiah 59, verse 19 to 11. Isaiah. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And you see that scripture? It is the spirit of the Lord that will lift up a standard against him. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, that's church, and unto them that turn from translation to Jacob, said the Lord. As for me, verse 21, this is my covenant with them, said the Lord. My spirit that is upon thee, and my words which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, Say the Lord from henceforth and forever. And you are the seed. The spirit of the Lord is in you. You must activate that spirit. The spirit that is upon thee. And my words which I have put in thy mouth. So when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. As the disciples experience in Acts chapter 2. You begin to speak in other tongues. That other tongue is the tongue of the spirit. Is the language of the spirit. And that spirit is helping us to pray with boldness that cannot be uttered. Because that spirit is the one that connects with the spirit of God. There are many things that you don't know how to really pray about. So when you want to engage more in intensive prayer and being able to pray for longer hours, you must be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that baptism in the Holy Spirit helps you to spend time praying over things that you know and things that you don't know. Jude 20. Jude 20, 
Another scripture that I know we all know says that we must build up ourselves on our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost. We must build ourselves up. We must build ourselves up in our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So when you are able to stand and pray in the Spirit, you will see in five minutes, ten minutes, you can continue like that. You sing a song and then you continue. Then you'll be able to pray for long hours. Sometimes our short, short prayers, they don't help and they are not sufficient. How to know that you are engaging God is how to spend time in His presence. Beloved, build up yourself on your most holy faith. As you are praying in the spirit, you are connecting with the spirit of God and your faith is developing. Your spirit is becoming active. You are connecting with God. Anybody who says, I hear God speak to me, he's not hearing physical voice. He's hearing the voice in the spirit. And that can only happen when you learn how to speak in tongues and pray in the Holy Ghost. You won't understand what you are singing praying by yourself. You won't understand it. But you will be able to sense the spirit of God coming into your spirit. You will feel a kind of joy in your spirit as you are speaking in tongues. When that joy floods your heart, you will also experience peace in your heart. Amen. That peace helps you to rest in faith, knowing that God is helping you to pray. There are some prayer points. There are some issues you face. You don't even know the prayer points to raise. But because you are activating the gift of speaking in tongues, you are praying. And that prayer will begin to unlock revelations to us. When we pray in the spirit, we unlock revelations. We unlock revelations. Because in Romans chapter 8, the scripture I wanted to read before in verse 26, Romans chapter 8, verse 26, Bible talks about the spirit also helping our infirmities. Helping our infirmities. For we do not know how we should pray as we ought. But the spirit itself, the spirit of God, maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. When you begin to pray in this, that's why it is important that you must be baptized in the Holy Ghost. You must ensure that you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Today, maybe we will have opportunity to minister the Holy Ghost baptism. Ensure that you speak in tongues. And those of us who are already speaking, there is nothing to be ashamed of. It is the language of the Spirit. It is the language of the children of God. It is our currency in the Spirit that you use to activate your spirit and activate the Spirit of God. And you bring God to speak. Once you begin to pray in tongues, you will have revelations. You will begin to bear fruits. You will receive guidance. Some things will just occur to you. It is the Holy Spirit. Some things that were confusing before, they will just become clear. Some will even hear a voice. Don't do that. Do it like this. It is the Spirit. Because you have spent time praying in the Holy Spirit. When we engage ourselves praying in the Holy Spirit, we will see that the Spirit of God is going to stir us up. And as our heart is stirred up, you will spend longer hours. By the time you realize you have spent one hour, sometimes you think, oh, how can I pray for so long? It is because you have not engaged the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, to also be able to pray long hours, read the Bible. As you are reading the Bible, start from the book of John. When you read the book of John, all the things that are written in red, they are the words of Jesus. The ones that are in black, they are the lives of Jesus. As you are reading the words of Jesus, take them as prayer points. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Jesus was the one that said it. That's already a prayer point. Jesus, be the way in my life. Show me the way. The way to go. Let your life be in me. That's already a prayer point. And you can spend the next five minutes praying on that. Prayer is not about asking God for food. Asking God for clothes. Because after a while, you won't need clothes again. After a while, you won't need food again. After a while, you won't need house again. So what will you now be praying for? That's why you have to learn how to pray in the spirit. Because by the time you are praying in the spirit, 
the spirit of God will engage your spirit to begin to pray about things that are needful. Somebody is sick in the hospital. How do you pray for such a person? Outside of God, heal the person. That's the end of what your brain can tell you. But when you begin to pray in the spirit, then there will be revelations. There will be help, medical assistance for that person in the hospital, medical support. I pray that God is going to touch our hearts and grant us understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. When we are saying God gives us this our daily bread, that is sufficient for us for the day. And as you are praying it, you will see that your life will have continuous supply of daily bread. It will be a continuous thing. That you won't need to be praying that for bread every day anymore. But rather, you are now beginning to pray the prayer that touches the heart of God. If we look at 1 uh, Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Let's quickly look at that as I round up now. And then we will pray. 1 Timothy chapter 2. You know, we have a prescription of the people on, of how to pray. Verse, from verse 1. I exhort therefore... That first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. You see? God wants us to pray for all men. That's how to generate prayer points. Verse 2. For kings. So you pray for all men. You pray for kings. For leaders. And all that are in authority. We must pray for them, whether we like them or not. God is not asking us to like them. God says pray for them. When you are you see, by the time you are praying for all men, for kings, for those in authority, and there is a reason for that, that we may lead, you see, it's not about them, it's we, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and in honesty. When we follow and begin to pray this, in verse, verse 3, it says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Verse 4, Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. This is pleasing to God. So our prayer life should be a life that is pleasing to God. It's not just about our own daily need. It's not just about our own bread and butter. It's not just about our, our, our well-being. But when we pray for all men, we are praying for salvation of all men. Because this is kingdom-minded prayer. Kingdom-minded. Our prayers also must be kingdom-centered and kingdom-minded. When it is kingdom-minded, it covers all this in the first four verses of this First Timothy chapter 2. We are praying for all men. So we are asking God, God send help to all men. What help? Help of salvation. Send your word to all men. Let people be able to reach every man to hear the gospel. Because that's the kingdom mindset for God. God wants all men to be saved. So we are saying God grants salvation to all men. Connect all men to opportunity to hear the gospel. We are praying for kings and for those who are in authority, all our leaders, our pastors, our governors, our commissioners, everyone in authority, our, even our lecturers, our VCs, our subgroup leaders. We are praying for them. Why are we praying for them? So that it can be well with us. We can lead a peaceful a, a, a life. Let there be no problem in our situation. Let's pray for us lecturers so that they will no longer go on strike. Maybe they are on strike because we have not prayed for them sufficiently. Let's pray for their leaders so that they can take right decision. They will not take foolish decisions that is affecting the life of people. Let's engage God and we can pray that prayer in the spirit. When we pray, you will see that God is able to reach out to all of these things, even things that we cannot pray in our understanding. And I pray that the grace and the anointing for prayer will come upon each and every one of us now in the mighty name of Jesus. You have to be taught to pray. That's why we have done this teaching. You have to start to pray so that you can go in prayer. Let's rise up to our feet. You need to learn how to pray. And the way to learn how to pray is by praying. So the first thing I want you to do is to give thanks to God. Is to give thanks to God. That's a type of prayer. Prayer of thanksgiving. I want you to give thanks to Please, all forms of prayer is communication and must be fervent. There's nothing like silent prayer. So I don't want you to keep quiet. One of the things you need to actually learn about prayer is that you have to learn to speak out from your mind. When you are too quiet, you will be distracted and you will sleep off. But when you are speaking out, you are conscious of yourself. Is that true? Is that true? Yeah. So I want you to speak out. I want your neighbor to hear you. And you know, 
The funny thing is that your neighbor will not be hearing you because your neighbor is also praying. So don't think that, oh, your neighbor is listening to your prayer. No, your neighbor is also praying. So he's not listening to your prayer. So nobody is listening to you except that God is listening. Hello? So lift up your hands and say, God, I thank you. Give thanks to God. God, I thank you I'm your child. Thank you for your spirit that is in me. Thank you for your power that is at work in my life. Thank you for helping me to be your child. Thank you for your spirit that is working in me. Thank you for your power that is available. Thank you for making me your child. I praise you. Open your mouth and say, God, I give you thanks. Give thanks to God. Give thanks to God. Give thanks to him. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. He's a great God. He's a mighty God. Tell God, God, I believe you. I believe your word. I believe your counsel. I believe that you are the Lord, the most high. Oh, I thank you for your kindness to me. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank God for your parents. Thank God for your uncles and your aunties. Thank you for those who are sending you to school. Thank God for the blessings of your life. Opportunity to go to school. Thank God for admission. Thank God for food that you eat. Thank you for clothes. Thank God for all these blessings in your life. Magnify his name. Bless him. Bless him and say, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are the helper of my life. You are praying. I want you to pray. Make sure you are talking. Speak out. I don't want you to be quiet. Speak out. Speak out. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You know, God came to Solomon and said, what do you want me to do for you? And Solomon prayed for what? Wisdom. So I want us to spend time right now. We are going to pray for wisdom. You know, we have been taught, and we are still going to be taught. Wisdom is the application of the knowledge that you have. You have this knowledge now you are going to apply it i want you to pray that god baptize me with wisdom that wisdom you gave to solomon and he became the wisest man god baptize me with wisdom open your mouth and begin to pray god give me wisdom god give me wisdom god give me wisdom ask for wisdom ask for knowledge ask for wisdom god give me wisdom let me be wise wise in my decisions wise in my choices choice of friends choice of where i go God, let me be wise. Let me be wise. God, I receive wisdom. Oh, the wisdom of Esther. I receive wisdom. Give me wisdom. The wisdom of Solomon. I receive wisdom. The wisdom of Daniel. I receive wisdom. Open your mouth. Solomon prayed for wisdom and God gave him wisdom. So pray. As you are praying for wisdom today, God is granting you that wisdom. God is releasing wisdom to you. Pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom. Ask God to give you wisdom. Ask God to give you wisdom. Ask God for knowledge. Knowledge is correct application of information that you have. Knowledge is that you know. Ability to know something. Ask God to give you knowledge. Insight. Ask for revelation. Ask for revelation. Revelation of learning. Revelation in the things of this life. God, reveal to me. I will not walk in darkness. My life will not be empty. I will not walk in darkness. My life will not be empty. My life will not be empty. I will not walk in darkness. 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 Magado le Yagada. Ask for revelation that God, in this training, in this camp to, today, God, give me knowledge. Let me understand everything that they are teaching us and give me wisdom to apply them to my situation when I leave this place. Pray for knowledge. Ask for guidance. The guidance of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guide my life. Don't let me derail. Don't let me make mistake. Guide my life. Give me opportunity to be blessed always. Opportunity to do your will. Guide me. Guide me, Lord. Spirit of God, come upon me. Ask the Spirit of God to come upon you. 